All right, yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? Welcome back, welcome back. Hope everyone had a great weekend. Um, we got week eight, DGen Central. We got the college show first, NFL show second. Michael, no Lena this week. Yeah, he's, he's taking, he's using his vacation days, so um, been good. Uh, we went 4-0 and as a, a crew on DODs, so that's, that's always good good uh olina had a good a good card everyone was positive this week right yeah uh yeah you were like plus point 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 five. five yeah, yeah. i went i went four and six yeah but so you hit your um, dod yeah my my dod saved me uh notre dame over 43 and a half like i said last week on the podcast like you like almost never see notre dame over unders like below 53 52 and a half it's just like, and I was, I mean, Notre Dame scored all the points too, which was like, oh, wow, this under was actually super realistic. But Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, uh, that's for sure. But uh, Big Ten's back. Yes, sir. IU, uh, baby. IU had a questionable win. Uh, you, know, you know, they were like the first team in history to like win with less than 250 yards and the, and, uh, there's some stat like they're they're I saw old. I saw them throwing stat lines around like just talking about the game outside of the the overtime replay uh, part of it, but I didn't really like catch on to most of it. I do know that it's the first time I used being a top ten AP in 33 years since 1987. It was like the um, first. It was like the first time a team has won a game where one. It was like one team gains under 200 yards in regulation and the other team gains over 500 yards. Okay. Then I didn't know exactly how much uh, total offense Penn state really had then. Uh, they had a lot and I, you barely like, had any. Because through like the first, like the entire first half, it was like all I you. So like I wasn't really. It, yeah. But it was because of three turnovers. Exactly. That's why I was working when the IU uh, Penn state game had started like my shift just started yeah and then I I got to get off early and so I called my parents and I was like hey you guys watching the game and they said yeah I was like my boss just let me leave early like pause the IU game so we can watch overtime together oh, so wow. like that's how I didn't really get to watch most of the game but like I was trying to like so so basically it. like I use defense they force turnovers, so, like, you can't be like, okay, I use offense look like shit. I'm not going to, like, say anything else. But their defense, even though they let up yards, I mean, forcing turnover is a skill, and they were able to do it. And then also Penn State's kicker is so fucking bad. Not the guy who almost yeah. hit the – not the guy who almost hit the game winner to yeah, end regulation. The, the, their actual kicker who just missed, yeah. like, a 36-yarder, a 25-yarder, and, like, a 38-yarder. I agree. It's like, insane. I, but, I, or, how poorly IU played in the second half outside of, like, the final, uh, like, five minutes of the fourth yeah. quarter. Like, we didn't really deserve to win, like, if you just look at that part of the game. See, I don't – I disagree. I think Penn State didn't deserve, deserve to win. Because, like, IU – like, it's not like they were turning the ball over or anything like that. Like, when yeah, you turn yeah, the ball yeah. over five times, you miss three, I mean, high school field goals. Right. And then your I, moron running back doesn't go down. Like, that's all yeah. on you. Yeah, that was definitely, like, a huge miscommunication. And, like, Penn State's actual running back ended up getting hurt, like, and I'm yeah, trying to – you, you got to know that. Like, I know, you, I know. The back – there's, like, there's no way – there's yeah. no way James Franklin did not say, do not score. Right. I think – and you could, like, kind of see it in real time. Like, he saw – like, he knew he had the first down already – and then you can start to see his, the wheels start to turn his, in his head by the time he yeah. gets to the one-and-a-half-yard line. But, then, like, but, but in his defense, though, like, you can't – defense can't cry we've played so well and then just let the IU offense go 90 yards in, like, 40 seconds and yeah. use a timeout. Like, yeah. how do you not, like, at least force them to use a timeout, force them to do this, like, any – you know what I mean? Like, you can't cry, like, oh, we played so well. And then, like, when yeah. it came – push came to shove, you can't get a stop. IU's offense looks flawless in that point. But IU won. This is this is going to go into my other point, though. Um, 
I think preseason rankings are so fucking stupid. And here's yeah, my point. Here's my point why. Yeah. IU goes to Rutgers this weekend, loses. I'm not saying they are. I'm saying, well, if IU goes to Rutgers this week, loses. Sure. They are out of the top 25 and probably yeah. have to win their next three straight games. They probably have to be like three and one to get back in. Four and one to get back in. Penn State loses Ohio State by like a last second field goal. Penn State will be 0 and 2 and stay in the rankings. Yeah, they'll probably be like 19 or 20. No, they'll be like 20. They're like 18 now, so they'll probably be like 24, yeah. 23 to 25. Oh, sure. Yeah, they probably. But like you uh, just had IU who beat them above. Yeah. And they're going to be knocked out because they lost to Rutgers, who would be 2 and 0. So you can't really make the argument they lost to a horse. Like, I mean, Rutgers probably isn't that, that good, but like they'd be 2 sure. and 0. So that's like. That just makes like preseason rankings are so fucking pointless. Yeah, I mean it's it's hard. It's like obviously like the circumstances for the season. I think they're really trying to do their best to like try to keep it relative for obviously for fans, but, okay. also for like the teams. But, but it's it's hard to do. But I'm completely okay with Ohio State going from unranked to number three after one week. I'm completely okay with that. Yeah. Because in your head, you know Ohio State's probably a top four team. Now, if they, if, they, if they come out and lose game one, then you're like, okay, they weren't ranked before because sure. they haven't played. Then they stay unranked. But, yeah. um, okay, we all know they're probably a top four team. They jumped to number three after being unranked. Penn State, we all have them in the top 12, top 15 going into the season. They beat IU. Okay, they go to number 10 or whatever. Having sure. them ranked, and I think this is like for every year. I don't think rankings – I think the first rankings that should come out should be the playoff rankings because, you know, these playoff guys kind of put it in their head what the AP poll is. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's I, definitely I, in the I mean, back of their head. So it's like, it's like, what are we basing it off of? I mean, every year we have a Big Ten, SEC, ACC, like some school from these conferences yeah. ranked high and then they go 0 and 3. And then, you know, the committee looks at it, it's like, well, week one, they were ranked number 16, according to the AP poll. Like, I just think it's so uh, – no one should be ranked because it's – it's you're just giving them – like, if Penn State goes three and five, IU gets a top ten win, like, it shouldn't be a top ten win. Okay. I, I see what you're saying. Um, and I do agree to a certain extent, like, rate the ranking system. Like, especially in college football – um also college basketball arguably but like most of most of the reason the ranking is around during the regular season is just for like advertising and uh like pumping up certain matchups that are going to be there like like you know like this week's card looks like dog shit because there's not a lot of like ranked matchups okay but why can't the, the playoff committee gets paid so much money why can't they come out with a ranking after like like the AP poll is fine is what I'm saying yeah I like the AP poll but why like the playoff committee why wait until week 10 or whatever you know that's what, like, okay, okay why not yeah. why not go that's, because because when it goes fair. to when it goes to week 10 they're basing so much of what they're ranking them off of off of the ap poll not what they think is, sure. is what i'm saying so it's like if okay ap poll does its thing ap poll waits until week one to rank everyone and then Okay, plus week three, the committee has three weeks to decide, and then they come out with their rankings. Because yeah, then I guess moving, because then moving forward, you know where you stack up criteria wise after three weeks, and you can kind of build off of all of that. And then it's not like a question mark, like oh, okay, uh, I, I definitely okay, I'm like 100 percent on the same line of thinking that you're on now. It was kind of confusing at first, but. Yeah, yeah, because you try to figure out, like, strength of schedule, like, good wins, bad wins, and then, like, by the end of the season, when you look back, like, oh, IU beat – like, just for example, because, like, IU's not going to be in the playoff picture, but IU beat this – the number eight team, and they went uh, seven and one, and their only loss was to Ohio State, but, like, they also beat a number eight team. But, like, by the end of the season, Penn that's State. My, that's my bad. point. Yeah. yeah, that's my point. And then it's also, like, counterproductive. Like, okay, when you wait so long, let's say Texas is 8-1 and one going into the first rankings. Uh, Iowa State beats them because Texas is ranked number four. Texas ends up losing four straight, three straight games. By the end of it, they're not even ranked. But they consider that, you know what I mean? So it's just, like, it's yeah. tough. But uh, that's they just do, my whole thing. Do, yeah, you could do like you could do playoff, uh, playoff, uh, like the playoff committee. Like they could just 
release theirs like once every three weeks if they really wanted to. Yeah, you could go a week three, a week six, and then once you get to week nine, then you go every week. Yeah, for sure yeah. you could because you kind of know a general theme or every two weeks, every three weeks. And it keeps weeks. people guessing because like the AP pools, the AP poll is cool, but it keeps like everyone actually guessing like on their Yeah, toes. but the, 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 what's crazy about the AP poll is like you always have like, you know, like a lot of it is like beat writers from like the fucking – uh college campus so it's like like mississippi yeah State's getting them like State. all their details about like coaches no one really cares about yeah like mississippi one. mississippi state after they beat lsu like every beat writer in mississippi had them at like number five you know what i mean right. it's like that's just fucking retarded like you can't do that and then like you know florida beat writers i'm not like this isn't a shot at florida i'm just picking schools but like their beat writers are gonna have them you know really high when they win and look good it's like that's why the AP pool is like kind of like I like it because it gives you a you know like when you're like you're saying like when you're looking at it matchup thing but it's also yeah. like like Minnesota probably should they were ranked because of last year like for sure 100 percent but they didn't really like lose a ton of people they lost their to, like, whole defense though their whole defense they returned like two starters on defense yo someone told me this weekend that they only lost four starters. Uh, no, their best player, Antonio Winfield, was their safety. They're both their safety. Oh, there, my no. God. No, 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 no. Their whole I'm defense is like – piece of shit. Yeah, their whole defense. Uh, their offense might have only lost four starters because I know their mm-hmm. offense returned a lot. because they. Were yeah, so either he misspoke or I misheard him. Yeah. but Cause uh, in, Because I, I like defense more in the Big Ten. I like defense is super under, like, appreciated in Big Ten just because – I, much. So speaking of that game, though, I think Michigan's actually pretty good this year. I think I do. They looked really good. Which like for the first for the first time, like I think like Harbaugh has a quarterback, and not like this guy is going to be Justin Fields, but like he doesn't make mistakes. He runs like Cam Newton in terms of power, which is like they are incorporating. Yeah, he's a big that. guy. Yeah, he's huge. He's a big guy. And then they have like these speedster freshman receivers that they just run jets. Like it looks like their offense looks completely different than the past yeah. three years. And then their defense, like yeah, they're like Minnesota's offense is going to score points. So like I, I wouldn't really put too much you know thought into their defense giving up points because Minnesota's going to score points. They have a quarterback who was like second in the nation last year in terms of like completion percentage and all that shit and then they have a probably a first round draft pick at wide receiver so minnesota is going to score a bunch of points yeah. but like i think michigan's pretty fucking good yeah i definitely think that like that statement alone speaks kind of uh values to how good michigan's pasty is because michigan was like forcing minnesota to pass like in terms of like the score line and minnesota only scored seven points the whole second half yeah and and, and, like, and like i mean the first drive, Michigan had second and three on the 50. Guy gets on sportsman like, so second and 18. They punt. Dude just gets it blocked. Like, every time Minnesota really did anything in the first half, it was almost because of a Michigan mistake. Other than, like, one drive, they drove all the way down the field. But, like, Michigan looked really good and dominant in the whole game, which is – Yeah. Different. And I think they are going to be really good this year. Now, they Ohio State better, – Yeah, they had a better win than Ohio – like, they looked – yeah, better. like Ohio, they Ohio better. State's Ohio State's offense looked really good. They could definitely could have yeah. done anything when they wanted, but their defense looked a little iffy. Like other than Sean Wade at corner, like their secondary looks iffy. I know they're playing a bunch of new guys, and their D line right. the same way, so they're probably going to get better. But like, I mean, their offense is going to be really, really fucking good. But it's like one of those things where you're going to be able to probably score some points on Ohio State this year because yeah. their defense is so young. Um, Wisconsin looked great, but they're fucked. Yeah, they're um, like the Wisconsin's quarterback looked actually really good. I don't know how he's he third, third stringer boy, second, but I don't know. Oh, he's their second stringer. Their first stringer got oh, hurt. they lost both the same weekend. No, no, no. So their first stringer got hurt in camp towards ACL right. or something. The guy who played Friday was their starter, he yeah. got COVID. Their backup, which is technically their third string, got COVID. So they're that, okay. That's yeah. what it was. Okay, I thought I thought one of the one of the second or third also got hurt, and then it was COVID, and then no, 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 no. It was first got hurt, second and third got COVID. So that which so now I mean like they can't play probably against Purdue, so like they're gonna lose two games. Yeah, they're fine. And it's just like. Why didn't the Big Ten start one or two weeks before just to have yeah, one every, bye big, week? Big storyline all over Twitter is like everyone like again is just punishing and 
ridiculing the Big Ten, which I'm a Big Ten guy, and dude, this blows. Like, but the it, pro- so the problem is, is now Wisconsin Max is going to play six games. Now Purdue and uh, Nebraska seven. Max are going to play seven. So you have unless three, they go undefeated somehow. Yeah, so you have three schools playing less than the eight games. That's all because of one team. If another team gets it, like it's gonna, you know how, like it's gonna fucking just fuck so much shit up. Like, yeah, this whole it, twenty, this whole twenty-one day thing too is so fucking stupid. Yeah, why is it twenty-one like, days? Like, the why C, is it just the like CDC seven? says fourteen? Right, like ten. They, now. They, I mean, they, I, they might even say ten now, but like it, Big Ten is it saying shouldn't be longer days. than seven days. Like, it shouldn't be like once you get your first like negative test back after having COVID. Yeah, you, you should be good in a play. Week. Agreed. Especially because they're doing daily testing. So, like, right. But so it just like makes me think, though, like, we've seen the MLB, the NFL, every conference in college football, everyone has dealt with a problem with COVID, which I think was expected from everyone just because, like, it's, it's around the country and, like, it's right. more how you deal with it than, like, not getting it. And, yeah. like, I just don't believe that no one else in the Big Ten is going to get it. Like, some other team's going to fucking get it. Yeah, and, I mean, and they're, they're punishing the teams and the players. Like, obviously, some of these guys are, like, going out and partying. That's one thing. But some of these guys are probably just, like, getting it when they're getting, like, food or, like – Yeah, exa- that's what I'm saying, across though. Campus. Like, why are you punishing – There's probably like, some, there's probably some guys that are just getting it that are doing normal daily acts. Yeah, exactly. Just like, like everyone dude. else like it's why just, are you punishing other exactly no i'm with there? i'm with you on that um you want to do some you want to update want, want, want me to update the uh yes records and stuff real quick yes, uh, yes so i'll do alina first real quick since he's not here alina had a fantastic week of college football um it is 10 unit uh what was his 10 unit it was uh he had the kansas state minus 19 and a half yeah and they shit all over kansas uh so Alina went seven and three, one and zero, do or die, and netted twelve point seven units. So Alina is back on track. We said that last week. Alina was kind of due for another one of those big weeks that he had early long. So Alina now through uh, seven weeks is plus twenty four point three. Like this is like hats off to Alina. Twenty four point three overall record, twenty eight, twenty one and two. And a four and three do or die record. So he's won four weeks worth of most units netted. Yeah, well he he uh I honestly think like the three three out of the four wins he's had have been ten unit plays on the DOD. Sure. And then I think all three losses have been five or less. Unit yeah, he's, plays. he's so like he's he picking his units very So well. when he puts ten units on it, it's like you better take it because he's been I think he's three and oh. I think he's three and zero on that. So yeah, um, so yeah. He's, also, that was for his three in a row. So if he would have lost that, he probably would have had eight burgers. Oh so. yeah, yeah. So that was like a must. Hit. He was like, "Fuck it, if I lose, I got to do burgers anyways." But, yep. Um, Michael also had a really solid week. Um, I mean, seven point nine units is like an amazing week for anybody. Uh, so Michael, week seven, seven point nine units, five and five overall. Michael did two do or die plays, hit both one, um, bring his overall up to point or 11.6 overall record, 26, 30, and one do or die record seven and four, uh, two weeks, one on units. Um, I mean, through seven weeks, you're basically averaging about a unit and a half profit. Uh, Lena's right around, uh, like 3.4 a week. Uh, positive and then I'm I do the same thing I like my card starts so good I'm like yes I'm gonna have like such a great banger of a card and now I'll lose like three or four one unit plays in a row but so yeah earlier mentioned I won I netted a plot positive half a unit yay uh four and six record one and oh on my do or die four unit play on the nerd I'm over so my overall for the season is negative 5.2 units, uh, overall record 23, 25, and 3, 5 and 5 on my do- – like the, my record and units can't get any more staler than they are. It's just I can't have a big boom week and I'm pretty stagnant or I'll lose like 
three or four units. Like, it's just how my season has gone. But, you know, I mean, with Ohio, with Big Ten back, there should still be, like, so, like, seven or eight more regular season weeks of college football. Oh, we got some time. We got all of November and then two, some three. Oh, two, do the Do the Big Ten have two buys or just one buy or no buys? No buys. Okay. So, there's, like, seven or eight more weeks of regular there's season, right? Seven – it might be eight more weeks of regular season and then conference championships. Right, so okay. We got Depends anywhere like between eight and nine. And then you got not this week, but next week we have the MAC coming back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's go. And then, like, the Pac-12 comes back next weekend. So, like, yeah. football is going to be – Our boy Brett on the, nerd, on the NFL podcast is a huge Oregon fan. So, we'll be sure to get a couple Oregon games on the uh, – highlighted games if they're playing a good matchup or a rivalry matchup. So, yeah. So, I mean, we'll be in full swing. Um, there's definitely some units to be won, that's for sure. 100%. Well, speaking of the highlighted games, let's get right into that. We Just to be clear, the, the card for college football this week is kind of on the weaker side in terms of matchups and stuff. There's still good picks out there, but just, just for uh, – we want. We definitely want to spend part of the podcast like updating Big Ten stuff and kind of giving a review of the week, including a new conference in the into the game. So um, for highlight games, we're just going to go over two this week, um, and then we'll go over our cards like games we really like that are kind of under the radar. Um, first game we're going to talk about is going to be Texas and Oklahoma State. Uh, I forgot what time the game is, so I cannot find them. I think oh, it's at three thirty. So yeah, Texas, Texas going into Oklahoma State. So Texas now is three and two, right? Yep. And Oklahoma State is still undefeated, four and zero. Yep. Okay, so Oklahoma State's the favorite, minus three and oh. By the way, our sponsor DraftKings dropped us for this week because their website's fucking up right now, or their app. So FanDuel hopped in, said, "Hey, we'll sponsor you for the one week DraftKings out. Not a sponsor." But yep. they're a sponsor. Um, so, yeah, Oklahoma State, minus three and a half at home, over under 58 and a half. Oklahoma State, like we said last week, kind of flying under the radar. I don't really feel like I know much about Oklahoma State. Like, I know in years past they have a high octane offense and yeah. can throw the ball 40, 50 yards in the air and score that, that kind of touchdown at least three or four times a game. But so I'm, I don't, I don't know what – what's up with this team they're like really good defensively um so they play tulsa week game one tulsa actually is like decent beat central florida yeah. beat south florida last week very handily tulsa's actually decent won 16 to 7 offense looked like shit defense let up seven points west virginia 27 13 kansas 47 to 7 just beat Iowa State at home. They were up 24-14. Iowa State scored under a minute left. They won 24-21. So, you're going four games. The most they've given up is 21 to an Iowa State team. That's pretty good. Their defense is really good. Their offense, has, say, yeah. their offense has Chubba Hubbard, who's good, but their quarterback kind of sucks, so they can't really run the ball. If the quarterback can get going, Chubba Hubbard could have a huge game. Um, Texas is horrible in fucking defense, so like this could be a perfect game to get them going. I think Oklahoma State, like everyone keeps just thinking that Texas is I don't I don't know why. Like Texas is just not good. I don't know how Baylor Baylor always plays in low scoring games now. Yeah, I don't, bro. Know, I don't get it. Like Texas Did you Baylor have them was, too on your card last week? No, I didn't. But so like, me, I, me and Alina both had Baylor plus over a touchdown. I think he had ten and I had eight and a half. And neither of those spreads were in contention to hit at yeah. almost any point of the game. Yeah, Baylor must have scored really late to lose by eleven then. But so like I mean, Texas, you know, you had your game against TCU that they blew, obviously the Oklahoma game. Baylor was 27 to 16. I just think they're Texas's offense. Cause if you take away the fourth quarter in the Oklahoma game, Texas scores like only 24 points in that game. So it's like their offense didn't look great. And then you throw in this Baylor game. It's not like they look good in that. They scored 27 points. And um, so I don't, I like Oklahoma state um, yeah. at home, especially 
I like them. I think winning against Iowa State was a big confidence booster. I do not think Oklahoma State will go undefeated, but I mean, you got to kind of keep your eye out on them. They're good. Yeah, they are. I don't think they're playoff good, but like their defense is going to keep them in almost any game. Yeah, I mean, they're basically the Big 12's last hope to get oh, a team. In. If they lose, they're not. There's zero chance they get a team in. Right. They would like they would need so many teams to like have two losses, which they would like, need Ohio would, State, Alabama, and Clemson to run the table, and then almost everyone else get two losses. Right. Other than like outside of the Big Ten teams, uh, no, Penn State seven and one, they would take Oklahoma State. Right. That, I mean, I mean, like, uh, I mean, like, they would need everyone. Besides oh, you're saying a Big Ten just needs one loss? Yeah. Right. Well, yes. Like yes. Oklahoma yes. State, because what are they? Are they doing ten regular season and then the conference just like the? Uh, well, they do. So nine. Oh, they had non-conference too, right? One non-conference, so ten okay, games. So ten reg. And, yeah. Yeah, they'll definitely take him ten and one over a seven and one. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, sure. so you'll have, you'll need like Notre Dame to lose twice. You'll need like, um, three SEC teams to lose twice, or Pac-12. Not to I don't honestly the Pac-12 is only playing like six games. I don't think no matter what they get in like six. Oregon would have to win every game by like, like twenty one. 24 yeah 24 yeah, 24 yeah. like every single game just yeah. but they're they're rebuilding right now like Justin Hub or Justin Herbert was like that's what I'm saying no team like game. no team in the Pac-12 was supposed to be like that good anyways so it's like you, you know the committee has that in the back of their head like okay if they do go undefeated the Pac-12 just isn't that good that's really what it is but okay yeah. so I like Oklahoma State in this game um I I mean from what you said I'll have to look at the uh, the turnover ratios for because I know Texas has turned over the ball and not really gotten a lot of turnovers off of like careful offenses. Um, I kind of like the under. Uh, I, I was thinking more. that too because like Texas last week played in a dog fight. Oklahoma right. State only plays in like those like ugly games now because their offense yeah. sucks. Like it's wild, a lot of players. points. Yeah, I guess they are kind of running the ball a bit more. Like they're off the offense is still good, but like slower, which. It, you don't think of those adjectives when you think. You're talking about like, Texas? No, Oklahoma State. Like, well, Texas uh, Texas runs the ball a decent amount because Sam Ellinger sucks at throwing. Yeah, if he's struggling, like they definitely switch up the offense quick. Like, yeah, they start running the ball too. I like the I I like that play. Yeah, under yeah, because both teams could just end up being running offenses. Yeah, like um, they only threw the ball twenty three times against Baylor. Yeah. Oh, just a quick little promo. Um, I brought up Justin Herbert, and we had an interesting comment during the Bears game, Monday night game. Uh, right now, if you're the Bengals, would you like? Would you rather have Joe Burrow or Justin Herbert as your quarterback? Like, you don't have to answer, but like, Brett was there, and he got so heated. So, like, I I made a video for us, like, live reacting to the Bears game, and that's just like one of the topics that come up. So. We'll have that on our main YouTube, Victory Lab Media. So, if that sounds interesting, we'll tweet definitely, it out. What's up? Definitely, too. definitely, Joe Burrow. We'll see. Uh, so the the second game we're going to talk about, the only other highlighted game is uh, is game day, right? Like, yeah, I mean, this was supposed to be you know Big Ten's game of the year. Obviously, IU upset Penn State, but it is still at this point ranked versus ranked team, twelve versus or three versus eighteen. Yeah, so we got Ohio State going into Penn State, not going to have the wideout that blows. Honestly, Penn State's one of the dopest home stadiums for big yeah. home games. It's pretty, it's pretty phenomenal. What like Penn State kind of like is kind of underrated. Like I think that's amazing, but I think they should be like a top five or a top six in Power Five like home stadium. Uh, what's the word like ambiance or uh, atmosphere? Yeah, atmosphere for sure. So Penn State's obviously coming off big loss to the Hoosiers, uh, plus twelve and a half, uh, and the over under is sixty three and a half. So Penn State's defense looked good, but there were times that IU's offense carved them up, and I don't think IU's offense is really that good. I do think IU has a good defense. I do, but like you gotta think. What sucks in this season 
and this is what's going to be tough. Like, this is what's tough gambling wise is like Penn State's season is isn't over. done because oh. they can still. Well, I mean, if they win, they can still go to the, but like they can't go to right. the playoffs. Like, they need playoffs, so much to happen. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're playoffs. So it's like, how do teams react when it's a shortened season so you don't have as many games and you already know that you can't play for a title? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It, Are we going to start to see some of these guys, like, some like third years and seniors like opt out like uh yeah did you, Mississippi State had like 15 players opt out oh I didn't even hear about that yeah they had their so their running back was the dude who was the leading rusher in the SEC and he was going to transfer and then Mike Leach convinced him to stay obviously Mike Leach doesn't use him because he doesn't run the ball and after they lost I think it was Texas A&M he was just like yeah I'm done and then like today like another 12 to 13 players said they're not oh. playing and then it sounded like they're gonna have even more and then Kansas's best offensive player Puka Williams he opted out after their loss at West Virginia so like I think you will especially these guys that opted out like like a Rondell Moore the wide receiver from Minnesota like those people you know who already opted out I feel like if those teams lose a game or two like Rondell Moore already didn't play if they if Purdue like loses a game or two, I could see him just be like, "All right, I'm out," because it's like all these guys are for sure going pro. That's why they opted out to begin with. But like Penn State, they're on their, like their fourth running back because I don't know if you saw, but their one running back got hurt against. Or I think their starter opted out, and then their running back is like out for the year now that he got hurt at IU. So they're yeah. on their, like third string running back. Um, Ohio, Justin Fields is fucking insanely good. They still have wide receivers. Their offense is still fucking flawless. And that's the thing is, like, Penn State, I think, only chance would to be, like, to hold Ohio State. And yeah. like you said, the wideout, no fans is going to affect Ohio Penn State way more than it's going to affect Ohio State. Okay. Like, like yeah. Penn State feeds off that atmosphere, and that's why they, like, I think keep some games close. Like, Ohio State doesn't give a shit. They're going to come in there regardless, and they're going to play football. Yeah. And this is under two touchdowns. I fucking love Ohio State in this situation. Yeah, I also love Ohio State. Uh, I don't really understand why this isn't over a two touchdown spread at all. Um, I think twelve and a half is a great, is a really solid play. Um, I also think like Penn State, like the reason a lot of those home games are close is because they'll have like a field goal or touchdown lead at half because they'll come out and they're like all fucking sparked because of the home crowd so also if you go if you go on like we're using FanDuel this week but Ohio State for the first half is minus six and a half like Ohio State's gonna win the first half 10 points minimum like well that's a, like I like after watching that IU game like that's a demoralizing loss and it's like I mean IU is really leading all game it's not like Penn State was like gave up the lead late. Like I was winning like majority of the game. Like you could have given me this line before Penn State lost to IU, and I still would have been like, I kind of like Ohio yeah. State without any fans. So now after watching Penn State, like their quarterback's not that good. No, not at all. So no, like he doesn't even like lick Justin Fields' uh, cock strap. Out. Yeah, but that's what. I'm, so like it's like okay, Ohio State got the game under their belt against Nebraska, and I mean, Ohio State probably rolls fucking here. Yeah, I'm adding it to my card as we speak. I don't know why. I I don't think I looked at it just because it was a highlight game, but I mean, it's going on the card. 100%. Yeah, this is like a guarantee. I agree. Can I, can I take first half and full game? Uh, I am too, so yeah. Alright, fuck it. Is it minus 6.5? Yeah, but it's like minus twenty for the odds, so it's kind of like eh. that's fine though. It's under a touchdown. Like I'm, All right, I'm yeah. cool with that. All right, so you want to get into our cards then? Yeah, so th those are the two highlight games we're going to talk about. Obviously, you know, at least two of the picks we're both going to have on our cards now. Uh, and if Olena doesn't watch this in his uh, free time before he makes his picks, then he's really losing out on some units there because. I'm not going to change. I'm not going to make it my, like, do or die or anything just because I got to stick with what my gut told me before the podcast started recording. Um, my do or dies have been doing better than they were the first, like, three or four weeks. So I'm just going to kind of stick with my There you gut. go. There you go. 
All so, right. We'll I'll start off then. Yeah. So I got Fresno State money line. They play on Friday night. Who got they got? They play at uh, – it's either Wyoming. No, it's um, – I'm just – The Cowboys? Fresno yeah. State plays at home against Colorado State. Oh, okay. Okay, they lost to Hawaii. We're leading at halftime, blew the game. Um, then I have Minnesota, Maryland over 61. I think Minnesota's defense is fucking horrendous. I think their offense is actually decent. Maryland's defense is fucking the worst probably in the Big Ten. Maryland is definitely it's probably, worse. It's probably a bottom three or four defense in Power Five. It, uh, yeah, for sure. Maryland is. Then Kansas, Syracuse. Yeah. It, something like that. But then, like, Maryland has two his brother who's decent. They have some receivers, and their head coach is an offensive guy. Like, I think Northwestern's defense is pretty good, and they just hit him in the mouth, and Maryland did not know how to react. I think their offense is going to play better this week, and especially Minnesota's defense isn't that good. So, I love the over in that. What then was Friday, it? It's 61. Oh, that's not bad. Okay. Yeah, Minnesota might score 50 themselves. Um, Hawaii money line. they play Friday night against Wyoming. I, I – don't know for sure, but I almost. So is Hawaii only playing away games this year? I was just about to say this. I think they are only playing away games this year. Yeah, because I don't think they want people coming to. Hawaii. No, I think the the state of Hawaii said. Oh no, they are. Wow. They play. Oh, they play four. I think they had to wait until November though. Oh, okay. like when? Are they even doing like tourism in Hawaii still? Like you can go. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can go. I don't maybe, know how, like, oh, yeah. I think you have to quarantine right when you get there. Right. But they have, like, rapid testing, so everyone obviously can't get on the plane unless you test negative. So, yeah. but Hawaii, money line Friday night, they play at Wyoming. They Like I just said earlier, they just beat Fresno. I like Illinois plus seven at home against Purdue. I think Illinois is going to bounce back. I don't. I think Purdue probably wins, but – Worst case, I'm sitting here with the push, in my opinion. Right. Like, if Illinois takes the lead, like, it's a lock. Yeah. And then my – never mind about that one. I got Iowa at home, minus two and a half against Northwestern. Um, they should have beat Purdue. They had the ball up three point or four points. The ball up four points on Purdue's 42-yard line with the first down and fumbled. Um, if they don't fumble – Purdue has like a minute to go down the field and score, and Iowa probably gets a field goal. Either worst case, it went to overtime. Easily should have beat Purdue. Um, but shout out Xander Horvath, friend of the program. He plucked and played amazing. So respect. Ohio State minus twelve. We already discussed that. Baylor, mu- huh? It's twelve and a half, right? Okay. Yeah, twelve and a half. Okay. Baylor money line. Ooh. And they. Uh-huh. They play TCU at home, one and three versus one and two. They bounce back. Yes, bounce back week. They're finally getting healthy. They've had guys on, like, the COVID list for a while. Yeah. Um, and then Ohio State first half minus 6.5. Yep. And then my do or die. All right. I have six plays, including the two Ohio State ones and then two other do or dies. So, yeah, Ohio State minus six and a half first half. Um, Ohio State minus 12 and a half whole game. Uh, and then I got um, Memphis plus six and a half uh, against Cincinnati. Um, I think Cincinnati looked really good against SMU, but Memphis is like a nice grindy team. I really like that game that they put up against UCF. Um, and I Cincinnati had two weeks to prepare for the SMU game. So like I I like six and a half like a decent amount, but if if Memphis goes over, it goes up to plus seven or plus seven and a half. Like it's it's super good. Like watch out watch out your cards for Memphis. Like wait till they get to seven or seven and a half. But I also like them at six and a half, so I'm taking it. Um, you mentioned the Purdue game. I'm taking the under in that game. Under fifty eight and a half. Um, you still there? Okay, I wasn't sure if, if you. Yeah, it. yeah, no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, the Purdue, the yeah, Purdue, Illinois. I like that pick. Yeah, Purdue, Illinois, under fifty-eight and a half. Um, I think, I think, I honestly think Purdue's defense is like average, maybe a little like better than we've seen in the past. Uh, yeah, and they like stepped up, especially like without their Purdue's offense. Uh, 
had a few turnovers or like bad field position flips. Like that was, I mean, their defense didn't let up like a shit ton of yards or anything. Right. Yeah. Which it's kind of scary because like IU obviously plays them at the end of the year. Um, I think our offense is like not quite as good if they have Rondell, but like our defense played decent. But anyway, so the rest of my card is uh, I got Louisville money line. I forget who they're playing. You got Louisville money line? Yeah. Uh, they play Vatek at home. Yeah, they play Virginia Tech at home. They're, they're plus 136. Vatek coming off that loss at Wake. Yeah, and Louisville's, like, shown, like, how good they, how good they can play. Um, so, I just think it's good value at home to get a home underdog like Louisville, like high octane. Um, and then my last one before my doer dies is Arkansas plus 12 and a half against uh is it AM or Mississippi State? Uh it has to be AM. There's no way Mississippi State's favored against Arkansas. Yeah. Yep. Mip uh AM at AM. Yep. So AM at AM like has like fifty thousand fans, but I also like the under a little bit by like t- Plus 12 and a half more. So Arkansas is decent, man. They're, they're, I got to give it to their coach. Everyone ripped on him because he was just an offensive line coach from Georgia. He's fucking had the boys ready to play this year. 100%. And then my last two are my do or dies. All right. So you're going to do or dies. Okay. I got one do or die, five unit play. I got Central Florida. Um, I, Jesus Christ. How the fuck do I forget who they're playing? Oh, Central Florida at Houston. Um, I watched Houston play BYU. It's two and a half, right? Yeah, two and a half. Um, I just don't think Houston's that good. And I think Central Florida's offense is really good. I think they're going to score points. Their defense will get enough stops. I like that for five units. There we go. Um, Amazing that you say that. Uh, My first do or die. Um, I'm really feeling the Notre Dame vibe, uh, which – I know it sounds insane. Uh, you're really not supposed to like really do the do or dies on your own teams, but they're playing Georgia Tech and the first half spread is 10 and a half. Like Notre Dame is going to be up 20 points minimum, 17 or 20 points at halftime. Like no doubt. Like they're looking very, very good. And the defense is is showing that they're like, they're the first – like, the, the defense has finally shown they can be consistent for weeks in a row versus the offense, which has still been a little uh, – but first half, like, ten and a half against Georgia Tech, they oh, fall off. They don't care. Notre Dame's defense is legit. Their I know. Off, their offense is just, like, eh. And, like, when they don't – if they play a good defense, they can't do much. Their defense is fucking legit. The, the defense is good. but And, like, they're finally getting into that stretch of their season where they're, like, clicking consistently – yeah, yeah, for sure. They're not letting up some, like, like bullshit. That. Yeah, and then – so that's for three units. And then my other one, I love that you brought up Central Florida. We don't we don't talk about our cards at all until the podcast starts. Um, but I'm taking the under, like, 82 and a half points. Like, who the fuck thinks Houston is putting up 38, 40 points? Like, I, I don't see Houston, like, keeping pace, even if UCF decides to go – and shit out like – Yeah. Know. I could see UCF being up like 21 points in the third quarter and just running. Right. Away. The only way I'm scared about it is if you, UCF ha- – but like Houston does have like a halfway deep, decent defense, which keeps them in games. But yeah. their offense is not going to be able to produce. So like if the defense does do well, then the unders doesn't have a chance. But also if their defense is bad, like their offense isn't going to make up the difference to keep them in the game, roll over. Sure. And so it's 82 and a half. That's going to be five unit play. It's a lot of points. Yeah. A lot of points. points. I've, and this is one of those games where I guarantee you, I can't change it now, but by Saturday, I think it's a Saturday night game. It's going to be like, it's going to be like 87 and a half. People are just going to keep spamming the over because they want to see. Yeah. Points. It'll probably get up to 85 at least. Like it's so crazy. People are just like, oh, it's a really high over. I got to take yeah, the over. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. But all right, quick show. No Alina. Uh, we'll tweet out Alina's picks. Um, Nagy's got to have a big week. He really needs to. Uh, yeah. Make up some ground. Um, we'll see you next week, though.